Good afternoon and welcome to Zon Academy's Quick Bite. Today's topic is Three Shape 2020 Software Overview. And I'd like to introduce our speaker of the day. It's, his name is Matthew Vines, who is a high-tech training supervisor for Zon Dental. At the end of the webinar, we will be taking questions. So please type them in for us to view at the bottom of your screen. And we will try to take as many as we can as time allows. All the others, we promise to get back to you uh, by email. And I'd like to introduce Matt. Enjoy the webinar. Thank you very much, Fran. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to 3Shape 2020 Quick Bite. Uh, as Fran said, my name is Matt. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started here. I'll do a little bit about myself. So my name is Matthew Vines, and I'm going to be a presenter this afternoon. Uh, a little bit about me, just kind of a history about myself. I've been in the industry for a little bit over 10 years. I'm the high tech training supervisor, and I currently manage the training team at Zon Dental. And I'm also working tandem with the support team as well to provide customer support and technical support. Uh, my career started with CAP uh, back in the day, and I grew with Henry Schein since 2016. Throughout my career, I've been lucky to experience many different CAD CAM equipment and softwares and different workflows as well. I've also had the, um, the honor of being able to experience the traditional lab workflows as well to gain a better understanding of the dental lab environment and see how the digital industry has you know, helped our transition into the digital world. So today we're gonna to be discussing the uh, three, -shape system, three Shape Dental System 2020 software. We're gonna take a dive into the changes and offerings of this version and talk about the advantages that it brings to the table. First, we'll take a look at the scanning improvements and see what has been uh, changed within this version. Second, we'll take a look at the different and new CAD design workflows that they've incorporated into the software. Third, we'll take a look and see what workflows have been added to the model builder portion of 3Shape to increase its utility within the software. Fourth, we'll go ahead and discuss the dental manager enhancements made to increase the overall effectiveness of the software. And then finally, we'll take a look at some sta software stabilization efforts that 3Shape has made to uh, make this version stable and reliable. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at the scanning improvements. So starting with the scanning improvements, with the latest 2020 version of the software, 3Shape increased the computing calculations of the proprietary triangulation of the point cloud. What this means is that they have increased the effectiveness of the calculation times, but you know, while maintaining the individual um, accuracy and, and scan information that you have with the scanners. This was enabled by increasing the correlation between the software and the GPU. So it's kind of an integration between the hardware of the, um, the scanner itself, the software computations, and the, uh, the hardware on the computer side as well. So all three of those things led to an increase of uh, effectiveness within the scanning itself. Along with that, 3Shape also rolled out their new generation Red E series scanners, boasting a 20% increase in scanning speed. These new scanners have been upgraded to the same next gen platform as the E4 scanner to provide faster and accurate scans that reduce scanning steps, save you time, and increase your productivity. This was a good change within the, the 3Shape 2020 software that we had. So those were the scanning improvements that we saw with the new release of 2020. Now let's go ahead and take a look onto the new CAD design workflows. So the new CAD design workflows that have been implemented within the three shape software, specifically within the 2020 version, are um, a, a couple few ones, but they're all really great in their features and uh, availability within the software. So the first one that we're gonna take a look at is the Toronto Bridge design. For a while, 3Shape has always had, always had the capability to, to create all on X style bridges, whether it's all on four or, or all on two style restoration implant bridges. And they even incorporated the artificial gingiva design to help add to the aesthetics of these bridges and to make them a nice cohesive aspect. Now with the 3Shape 2020 software, we see that addition of an all in one implant bridge workflow. So this kind of combines the aspect of not just the um, all on X style bridges, but an availability of different types of offerings as far as the cutback goes for the prep. 
So now with the three shape 2020s, we see the addition of this new workflow that helps gives us full design flexibility, allowing us to offset the design preps in just a few clicks, combine with any type of cutback or leave a fully anatomical crown. So we have different options that allow us to do this. So in this case, we'd be more similar to create an on four style bridge that allows us to uh, create a substructure design for the bridge and then create you know, either crowns or, or bridges on top of that to be cemented. So the gingiva now is fully um, fitted to the teeth within one click, saving time for the user and also making it a little bit more accurate as it was in the past. Previously, you had to go and move all the indications individually to raise the papilla to the individual heights of the crowns and to match it all by hand. And that took a lot of time and effort in order to do so. Now with one single click, we're just going to go ahead and seamlessly match, match those up to the margins or up to the individual crowns as need be. So it's a lot less work that we have to do in software, but it creates a much more reliable and accurate restoration. Uh, after closing the case, we now have an option to make a second layer order, which allows us to create the finished crown design on top. So if we were to design something similar, like we see on screen here, where we have a substructure design, whether it's uh, you know, a fully cut back prep like this that we have, or if it was a facial cut back, it would allow us to go ahead and create a secondary order that combines our design to the original scan so that we can create a restoration that mates up directly on top of the existing design that we just had created. So this new implant bridge reduction workflow is really built on top of the existing full anatomy bridge workflow. So it's possible to use any and all available implant bridge types when using this one workflow. So that's a really great advantage that we uh, came to see within the 2020 software, which previously we didn't have. So we had to use workarounds in order to create the same sort of aspect. Those workarounds were inefficient and ineffective in some cases and didn't really tend to leave us with the best results. So we had to you know, make do with what we had. And now we have that as a full feature within the 2020 software, which alleviates that problem that we had previously. Another great new feature that we see within the 2020 software is this Gingivator 3.0, which is the Gingiva anatomy design for dentures. Designing Gingiva, as we all know, is probably one of the hardest and most time consuming aspects of the digital, dental, digital denture process. And it usually requires anywhere from around 10 to 15 minutes to go to do. With the new Gingivator aspect, the design of the anatomy is very realistic and, and a lot faster and simpler to do. You can use preset values or you can customize your settings to deliver a more natural appearance to the, to the design. It makes it a little bit easier and a little bit um, more intuitive to use and allows us to, as we said, create more accurate digital dentures. Some other new CAD designs that were implemented were the I I have a Clar, um, I have a Clar disc, or sorry, I have Ocean disc from I have Clar. I have Clar Vivident released their new digital uh, dentures workflow, the I have, I have Ocean disc. Uh, I have Ocean disc. I have Ocean uses a, a unique um, database three-dimensional tool that dental arch geometry in the disc. I have Ocean combines the teeth and, and base material in one bicolor disc to deliver an efficient monolithic digital denture solution. Mill dentures will only need to be polished uh, after this is completed to go straight to delivery. So it really increases that effectiveness going from one design straight into the uh, delivered prosthesis. With the Dental System 2020, users will be able to design these dentures and accurately place it within the disc. This manufacturing workflow is exclusively available with the three-shaped dental system. So that's a really neat process that we've had um, brought in from Ivoclar Viva Dent in we can you know, work seamlessly with that. In addition to that, we had the integrated um, direct access to the tutorials. So integrated in all aspects of the dental system is the ability to access tutorials. A new button has been added near the little help sign, as you see here in the picture, um, on every step to allow you to directly access those video tutorials that 3Shape has. Currently, 3Shape has a little bit more than 130 uh, tutorials directly linked to support specific workflows. The tutorials are constantly being added and will not require you to update in order to uh, view these tutorials. 
So these are a great aspect because if we get stuck on an individual workflow or an individual step within that workflow, we can go ahead and utilize this tool to give us some sort of pinpoint as uh, what to do next or, or how to achieve the results that we're looking to achieve. The great feature that uh, allows us to go ahead and um, mitigate the amount of time that we're calling into support for individual aspects relative to topics that we might not have information on, but we can search it really quick. A um, couple more uh, new CAD design workflows um, was a big change that happened within the 2020 software was the involvement in capabilities with additional scans added to cases. The first improvement was the mirroring tool in the V-shaped smile composer. This has been expanded with a morph to additional feature that allows for the morphing of a design to any additional scans. So basically it takes the ability that we had previously where we could go ahead and scan a double prep or a wax up pre prep and we could morph a design to that. Now we can go ahead and add additional scans to our cases and go about uh, manipulating our designs and adding it to there. So any sort of wax up previous design or mock-ups that you can import as additional scans uh, can be used to replicate during the design process. The update to this functionality gave significantly faster and more stable results within the morphing process and gives us a, a little bit easier of a tool to kind of use during the manipulation of the design process. The second improvement that we saw on the additional scans aspect was the ability to combine scans. It is now possible to merge all selected models into one and save the combined design for or for, save the combined for design or future use. Uh, any changes made are saved in an extended scan, and this allows us to create virtual mockups straight from the design or prepare the models for future use. This functionality is available in the right toolbar under the additional scans feature, allowing to use either save design which can be used with one teeth or more teeth or load an existing design. And this is a great feature because a lot of the times that we had to go about uh, combining individual parts of scans, we didn't have that capability before. So now we can go ahead and use that and uh, develop our cases as need be with the individual scans that we may have or individual aspects of scans that may be better than other portions and combine those into one solid working model to make it the most efficient case that we can. So those were the, the new CAD uh, individual workflows that we had talked about. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the model builder workflows. So the first workflow that has been added in the 3Shape 2020 software is the ability to combine models with the design. A, a new step in the model builder workflow allows you to merge a model or to make space in Gingiva for each individual restoration. This step enables new design and model combinations. It is now possible to merge a model with any type of indication. For example, you can combine a scan in a frame and use it as a hand veneering guide or, or make an anatomical uh, diagnostic wax with that aspect. So the ability to um, integrate the model with the indication itself allows us to create many different options and many different um, models that we can work from off of there, which is a great feature that was not previously available. The next, uh, um, I guess you'd say, uh, it, it wouldn't be a new model builder workflow, but it'd be a, an enhanced one, which would be the simpler diagnostic wax up models. If you've ever tried to create a wax up model with the, um, the model builder software, you know that you have to take your design, enter it into the case as a certain indication type, and then make the adjustments in the design, and then go through the model builder process. And then at the end of it all, you had to then take your design and copy and append the design to the model in order to create that individual diagnostic model. So with this workflow, it's a much more simpler design of the diagnostic wax up model than what we just previously talked about. With this great feature, you'll be able to create the diagnostic wax ups much faster. You can virtually remove the existing teeth and thereby cater for adding temporary pontics or crowns as needed. And then you can create a diagnostic model by merging the case in the order in the design template. This improves, this improvement allows you to get um, a diagnostic model within the original order case. So no longer do we have to you know, set up the case for a diagnostic model, do all the necessary work around the steps, and then go back in and, and make a copy of that case in order to make our appending 
uh, designs attached to that model. We can go ahead and do that seamlessly in one single step within the model build a workflow. This is a great advantage for a lot of people doing those uh, diagnostic backset models and um, allows us to go ahead and make them a lot faster and easier and without less hiccups and, and no possibility of really running into any issues that we had previously seen with that workaround feature. Some more uh, model builder workflows that we have are the ability to extract scan abutments. So this was just recently added to the, the model builder workflow. Uh, the tooth extraction tool was previously there and it allowed you to go ahead and remove tooth teeth um, in the individual areas and uh, kind of sculpt that area based upon how you see fit and how you wanted that gingiva to react to that um, virtual, virtual, um, virtual extraction. Now that same tool can be also used for the virtual extraction of scan bodies. Sometimes when you get a scan body scan that doesn't have a, uh, a gingival scan, a separate gingival scan for an iOS, when you go through the model builder process, this scan body will kind of remain during the whole process and be there towards the end, kind of interrupting your, your model building process and in creating an in instance that you didn't really want to be there. So now we can go ahead and remove that using the extract scan tool that allows us to remove this feature so that we can have a, a basic underlying uh, understanding of where the gingiva would be at should that scan body not be there. But we didn't have those additional scans. So it kind of allows us to go ahead and create those scans virtually, but not having to mess up anything within the workflow in order to do so. The last model builder workflow that we're going to take a look at really, again, isn't a new one, um, but it, the changes are. So in the soft tissue design, the aspect of a model builder, um, we have a much easier and updated controls that are more intuitive and give more freedom to create. Uh, we can now adjust the bottom part of the tissue, uh, taking into account the angle and height of the place, placement of the, the cut spline. We can go ahead and um, you know, adjust this based upon the individual uh, individual implants that we had, or we can go ahead and do that along um, all the implants if you had multiple implants in the case. So this is really helpful specifically in digital model implant cases that have uh, implants on various levels and differing angles. So it allows us to go ahead and manipulate this a little bit more and without stretching across to the opposite side of the arch, which is a huge deal. Previously, when you had to make any sort of engagements on this soft tissue model, you might make these changes, but they may apply to the back end of the model, thus cutting off uh, a portion of your opposite side of the arch, which may or may not be something that you want to do. So a little bit more intuitive and a little bit faster makes it a little bit more efficient with our model builder software. So those were the, the changes that we saw happening within the 2020 software relative to those uh, model builder um, workflows. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the dental manager enhancements that were made to 2020 that give it an edge over the other versions. So an enhancement that we see come to the 2020 software is a new filter making browsing for the materials in the order forms much easier. This is that easier material management aspect. It is available for all drop down menus in the dental manager order form. So providing better searches for your materials, your implant systems, your manufacturers, manufacturing processes, or even external labs. You can simply type in the name or just a few letters, to narrow down the search and speed up the search itself. Furthermore, it is possible to select favorite materials, making them appear at the top of the list for quick access. This is a great enhancement uh, from the previous aspect where you had to go ahead and uh, manipulate the individual materials by hand in the dental system control panel and bring them up to the top of the list or in order however you want it to see fit but you still couldn't um, navigate them fast enough if you had a large list of materials which a lot of us do especially within today's industry where we have a lot of different materials and manufacturers and instances like that it gets very convoluted and very uh, sticky really quick so this allows us to go ahead and cipher through those individual aspects and filter out the ones that we need for the individual case that we're setting up and utilize that to the best of our ability in, in fast and quick environment. Another enhancement is the, um, the materials validation that we saw come to the dental system 2020. Um, the materials validation has new validations and restrictions that deliver better control when producing the restoration. So these preferences are um, set within the control panel themselves, but they 
um, they set these preferences according to the, the specific materials in their respective applications based upon what you choose here. So you can choose it based upon an individual tooth type, um, an individual process that you're doing, whether it's full contour crowns or, or substructures or whatnot, allows for all types of material validations to be um, customized upon the manufacturer's needs. So this option can be located in the material section under the basic elements in the dental system control panel. It's a great way to allow manufacturers and, and um, other, other uh, materials aspects to kind of control their materials and allow them to be validated based upon their needs and their specificities. Okay, so that was the, the last of the dental system uh, or dental manager enhancements, I should say. So now let's go ahead and let's take a look at the listed software stabilizations that 3Shape has made to the 2020 versions that were previously or may have been previously issues with other 2020 versions that we may have seen. So starting off with scanning, we're going to see multiple improvements on the continuous optimization of post-processing. So obviously uh, that goes back to the first slide that we talked about with the individual uh, improvements to the scanning process that they saw. Inverted normal on full denture impression arch has been fixed. So normally when you're scanning a full denture on impressions, you, there is a lot of issues relative to triangles being inverted or, or being converted incorrectly, thus creating issues when you go to create the base within the full denture software. So this was rectified within that version. Base, generation, base generalization is stabilized if undercuts are present in retromolar pad areas. So previously you had to optimize your, your insertion direction to minimize the amount of undercuts in the retromolar pad areas, especially on a lower arch where they're very canted inwards. Uh, this would cause a lot of issues when going through the uh, base generalization, generalization because it would um, try to, to, to encapsulate those undercuts as best as it could with retaining to the, the, the base outline. But if those undercuts were exceeding beyond that base underline, it really ran into issues as far as not being able to compute that individual baseline. So now this goes ahead and corrects that and uh, you know changes that if need to if need be to kind of suit down to the area that it should be. So the base gen another one with the base generation is incorrect directions or is are reopened. So um, if you've designed a, a full denture case and you've ever gone back in to redesign it sometimes on the, uh, the lower arch, the mandible arch, you would see instances where the insertion direction of the base was uh, reversed and thus causing us a lot of errors as far as we saw with those, um, those normals, those inverted normals or issues relative to the base applying to the teeth. So that has been fixed within the system. Uh, the system is stable for cases with an exception empty scan. So there was a, a, a known issue back in 2019 that there was a couple of cases that ran into an empty scan error uh, relative to scans that were either created or not saved uh, during the full scanning process for whatever reason. And, and then when you meant to move on to the design process, it would say that there was no scan available or empty scan. So this has been a, a nice stabilization that we saw within the 2020 software to help alleviate those issues that we saw on the support side. Visible lines on point cloud and scans where scanning and scan wax up uh, string fixture. So uh, if anybody has used that, that's um, we, we call it the wire fence, but it basically is a, a wire fixture that allows you to hold the wax up in place while scanning both the occlusal and the um, labial side of the wax up itself. Sometimes during that scanning process, you would capture the point cloud of those individual strings, which would cause issues as far as the wax up is concerned because just like with the denture impression fixture it would go ahead and create inverted surface normals on the wax up and then when you went to append your design to that wax up what would happen is it would um, essentially just run into issues um, being able to fill that space because those those normals didn't work correctly so this seeks to remove those aspects from being a part of that uh, computation as we talked about going back to the scanning again the better computation is not only more effective for time wise but as you can see here it's a little bit more effective in the scan accuracy itself so it's not including aspects that are not really um, viable in this sort of uh, instance or doesn't really need to be added to this aspect so that's a, a great feature that we saw happening with the 2020 software with the control panel and dental manager we saw an optimized export for multiple orders 
So this is great because uh, if you've ever had to do a full backup and uninstall and reinstall of 3Shape for whatever reason, whether it be an update or uh, a reinstall for a new server or whatnot, this allowed us to go ahead and back up those cases a lot faster than previously done. Um, the previous aspect could take anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes for individual case. Now it's usually about like half hour for the whole database, depending if you had anything less than a thousand, thousand, um, thousand orders in the, in the dental manager at that time. It still is a little bit more, more of a manual backup um, on the, the outside of things, outside of the database, but this is specifically for the dental manager itself. Then we saw the robust launch of 3Shape Communicate Service dental system installation. So uh, with the 2020 software, previously 3Shape Dental System Communicate was installed on top of the dental manager in the 2019 and in later ver or earlier versions, I should say. Um, and that was a good aspect because it was a little bit faster during the install, but it was less um, effective as a 3Shape Communicate Service itself. So this one, um, kind of excluded that outside of the main, main normal package, but it was still included in the main installer. So it was just a, a secondary feature that kind of created a normal or um, a more like an island type aspect service. It's, it's really more behind the scenes, but it basically allows us to have a more um, stable three shape communicate service than what was previously designated. The possibility of changing abutment crown in case to screw chain crown. So uh, previously you had um, if you went from abutment and a crown on top to changing that to screw chain crown, uh, there would be a lot of issues relative to the um, design as it attached to the individual um, abutment base, as you saw there, or, or not as you saw, but uh, as the abutment base. So there would be a lot of issues relative to that. So they fixed that. So it allows for seamless integration of the existing abutment base design and to kind of relegate that to the uh, crown design that we had previously as to one one saw design for the screw chain crown. Improved messaging in dental manager when it cannot connect to the BAT database. So before it was just a generic error that said uh, error could not connect to database. It wouldn't give you a string of reasons why, because there's a multiple reasons that you might not be able to connect to the database, whether it be a network issue, whether it be um, you know, software related, whether it be that the database was uh, overwhelmed with cases or, or very hard to search through. It was something that was, um, you know, very hard to kind of diagnose or, or really understand the issue. So this uh, improved messaging allows us to kind of get to the root cause of the reason why it can't connect to the database and be able to find a resolution a lot faster. Uh, it's now possible to save an order with two implant bridges on one jaw. This was a, a very uncommon issue that we saw where um, if you had individual implant bridges on one jaw, it, it would kind of run through an error saying that it wasn't possible to create such an order that you had to create it individually. I think this was a little bit um, not very well seen in 2019 and earlier versions, but it was an issue that we saw um, happen a few times. So this has been completely changed and um, you know there's not going to be an error happening with this at all. So that's a good feature that we had seen. Standard copy co option of dental manager now keeps both design of a restoration and a model. Uh, this is a great feature especially if you're going back to the model builder aspect when we had to use that individual option to um, create a diagnostic wax stuff. If you use the standard copy feature, sometimes it would take your design but wouldn't keep your model builder aspect, so you'd have to go through the model builder as well. Now with the standard copy feature, we can go ahead and create both aspects and keep all aspects of our design and of our model. So those were some nice stabilization changes that we saw happen within the 2020 software that makes it really nice and effective. So let's go ahead and take a look at some more stabilizations that they've done within the software to see what the enhancements were. So uh, dental designer itself. Uh, feature from positioned on prepared step is corrected. So the feature form um, basically is just a, the visual aid on top of the prepare step. It didn't make it look a little bit more intuitive. It looked more like the segmentation, but now it's more of a uh, intuitive design, so it allows you to know what the prepare step is, separate from the sectioning or segmentation step, separate from the margin step. So it's a little bit more intuitive as far as, far as that goes. The offset value for wax or bridges is not visually blocked anymore. Um, this is something that you you really didn't have uh, too much control over, is is because the the um, user interface would basically block out this individual aspect, and you wouldn't be able to 
to view these these changes or or view these settings to make the changes. Now it's been moved on to a permanent or fixed uh, UI, which allows for a better access to these individual aspects. The issue with a crash in Three Shape Smile Composer when quickly adding using add or move tools with referenced models is fixed. This is a good one because we saw a lot of issues relative to that where it would just crash individually and not be able to move forward with the case and we didn't know why and it tend to be with individual little clicks that you're doing on the add move room feature uh, reference to the models. It would cause a lot of issues and lag down and, and tie down the case and then that would cause issues further down the workflow process. So this was great to have uh, prior because you don't want to run into issues at the start of the case, let alone at the main design portion. The 3D preview is, is stabilized and not crash when using a slider and move the model simultaneously. I haven't seen this one happen personally, but I have heard of it where people went to 3D preview their designs and went to, uh, while using a, a 3D mouse, if you went to go ahead and scroll or, or, or move while using the mouse, the uh, regular mouse to go ahead and uh, make transparent or opaque individual aspects of the scan, it would, um, it would freeze up on itself and we didn't know why. So this has been a, an improvement with the 3D preview software. It is now possible to design and implement bridge order with a positioning guide. Um, previously, if you, if you went to design a, a positioning guide, you could only do so on um, single abutments only. You didn't have the option to create a positioning guide relative to implant bridges because it just, it would freeze up and it didn't have the capability of doing so. And it would basically tell you that it wasn't possible to create the order. Now it's possible to go ahead and design that at the same time. So uh, we don't have any errors in the order form and we don't have any errors in the, um, the design uh, workflow as well. So that's really good. It's possible to sculpt under the protected surface without fixed margin area. So now we can go ahead and make any additional changes that may be necessary under like abutments or screw chain crowns under those protected surface areas without interrupting the, the fixed margin area. So normally there'd be a, a correct offset all the way out to the outside, but that may be an hindering aspect of your design. So now we can go ahead and smooth out those areas individually without running into errors as far as surface normals, again, triangulations that may happen with the design at that point. Model Builder, we saw optimized functionality of the trimming 3D part scans. That was a good feature. Um, the possibility of changing the insertion direction of the die if there's an opposite die on the antagonist scan. So this was um, one that I ran into a lot was when you went to change the insertion direction of a die, but there was a die on the opposite side of the scan, it would run into an error relative to creating those individual dies. Um, so you couldn't really change the insertion direction of those dies if they're on both sides. And the fix to that was to kind of separate the models into two individual model cases and then go about doing the uh, insertion directions as you need to fit to make the, make the die fit into the model properly. Now that has been rectified, so we can go ahead and instead of having two cases, we can go ahead and create them into one, which is nice, so we don't have a lot of clutter in our system. It's a lot faster and, like I said, a lot cleaner to work with. And the section dies from the opposite jaw and simultaneous cases are no longer visible on the generate die step. So this it kind of goes again to the same previous one where we had issues, not just with the insertion direction, but it would basically um, be visible throughout the whole process. Now, rather than focusing on those individual dies from the opposing arch, they're no longer visible during our, our generate die step. So we can go ahead and just see the ones that we're focusing on and see if we need to make any changes to that. Because before you could go ahead and remove the opposing arch, but it wouldn't remove the opposing dies. It would just remove the opposing arch. So you still had the dies on top of your other dies, um, their opposing arches, which really didn't help and it kind of created a distracting environment for us to work in. So that's good to see that that's been rectified. Fixed neighbor context protection while subtracting anatomical abutment, <laughs> reducing labial area. So this just goes um, back to that, uh, you know, the, the design aspect where we're going through um, and we're, we're using that fixed neighbor context protection aspect, and it, it basically allows for that. So it's that's a good it's a good change that we had from there because that was a, a an issue that we saw a lot with relative to um, individual dies cutting out sections on the neighboring context during the model builder step. So that not being an issue anymore is, is really good because it's not necessary and allows us to go ahead and maintain the integrity of those contexts during the model builder process. 
Articulator interface step supports zero value of minimum model base height setting. So this is good because sometimes you didn't need a base or if you had a very low base and you just wanted to close um, bottom to your, to your scans, this wouldn't allow you to go ahead and use the articulator interface. Uh, it would basically just give us an error saying that there is no base or the base setting was um, too low to incorporate this articulator interface. Now it's been removed, so you can go ahead and um, you know have a zero base height essentially, which is the minimum size that you need for um, a case. And you can go ahead and attach an articulator onto there, which is nice. And then finally, the model design is now possible without restorations. Redesign for designed orders created by standard copy operation or after modifying digital models in the order form. So that's good. So no longer do we have to um, create restorations in order to create models or if we have to go to redesign them the um, restorations in order to create the models we don't have to worry about that anymore we can just go straight into the model builder aspect without any any hindrances so that's good and i believe that is all that we have to talk about now so i'm going to go ahead and that brings us to um the end of the three shape demo system 2020 overview um, I'd like to thank you all for taking the time to go through with me this afternoon. I do want to go ahead and open it up to questions, but first we'll address some questions that we were presented to uh, me at the time of registration. So the first question that I saw was, how stable is the program on a production system? So the program is extremely stable. Just like all software-based programs, you're limited by your setup. What this means is that you need to make sure that your hardware, your network um, is set up to support the program itself. Make sure that you have enough storage on your computer or network drive, and make sure that you have a high performance across your network to make it work most efficiently. Another one was, uh, can borders of dentures or base plates be drawn freehand rather than connecting dots, improving speed of design dentures or RPDs? Yes, uh, there is an option in designing the borders that allows you to freehand or draw a spline as opposed to connecting a series of dots. Uh, to do this, you either simply click and drag from the first instance without letting go of the, the mouse button, or if you've already had a portion of your border slip started, you can go ahead and right click on that, uh, that line, and it'll give you an option to choose the option of fast edit spline, which allows you to go ahead and click and drag a line to create the baseline around the geometry that you want it to be. Okay, that being okay, said, let's Matt. go ahead and open it up the floor for any additional questions. Thank you so much, Matt. We do have two questions. And the first one is that when a doctor is scanning with TRIOS, do you like as much gingiva as possible when using model using the model builder? So it's not uh, relative to how much gingiva is there, but the ending of the gingiva and how much um, how much information there is. So typically when we see iOS scans with a lot of gingival surface, that gingival surface kind of overlap into the, the cheek or the soft tissue aspect. And uh, that tends to create a lot of inverted triangles or issues within that portion of the scan. And we ended up editing out that portion of the scan anyways during the model builder process because we don't want a lot of the base material to, to be there to kind of minimize the amount of material that we're doing for printing, but also to increase the, the printing um, speed as well. So typically, it's not always best to get the most amount of gingiva. It's important that we just get the, um, the most amount of information needed, OK? Uh, typically, when we ask doctors to gain more information around the gingiva, like I said, it tends to open up those areas to a lot of issues. And within the software, that can generate a lot of issues uh, during the calculations or whatnot. The software does have an option to, um, to re um, evaluate the scans and, and to kind of edit them accordingly. And that's a good feature that we do have. So if, if you wanted to, you can go ahead and tell the doctor to get, gain as much information as you can, but it's not really necessary. And it tends to be a burden on the doctor's side because the more scans that they take on the iOS, the more burdensome it is on the case itself. And that, that presents a lot of issues going forward. So I would say uh, keep it to a minimum as much as you need to be successful with the case. Thank you. So now we have one more and it says, are you able to customize your order form so when a doctor connects with you through Communicate, they can see your specific crowns? Like example, if you call your monolithic zirconia Super Z. So unfortunately, there's no way that the doctor can see that based upon 3Shape Communicate because there's a difference between 3Shape Trios and 3Shape uh, Dental System. And 
that's to make it easier for the, the practice when they're going to set up the case that they don't have to worry about what type of zirconia you're using, rather than just to select a, a monolithic zirconia, um, zirconia or anatomical crown. So it's meant for ease of use on the practice side to kind of limit the amount of options that you have. But on the dental side, as we know, we have a, a slew of different options that we can use to do that. So you can customize your order form to being uh, best for you. And we can go ahead and create individual customizations for the doctor. So if the doctor has a specific uh, tooth set that he likes to use for a specific type of material. So say if he had posterior cases and he likes to use low translucent zirconia but high strength zirconia, we can go ahead and make some customizations in the order form so that whenever that doctor sends in the case and it's gonna be in the posterior region, it's automatically selecting that type of zirconia for you. And vice versa, if he's doing it for the anterior and he wants that high translucency uh, zirconia, we can go ahead and do the same there as well. So anytime the doctor were to send a case that was in the anterior crown, uh, we can go ahead and notify the order form to automatically select a default type of zirconia for you. It's a little bit tedious to do that, but it's very efficient as far as if you have a set um, set of boundaries with your doctor and set of rules that he likes to follow, and he's very consistent with that, it can be very effective. Excellent. So I think that's it with the questions. I want to thank you, Matt, for this really important overview on 3Shape uh, Software 2020. And I also want to thank our attendees for joining us today. Please be in touch with us with any topics you'd like us to touch upon and take a look at past recorded education from Zon Academy on YouTube. Thank you, everybody, and have a wonderful rest of your day.